In this video, I want to demonstrate how to build the article snippet using structured data. And I want to clarify why especially this article snippet is so important not only for text, but for voice search too. In this video, I want to show you how an article snippet is built. You hopefully took all the lessons from the previous modules. If not, please jump back to the beginning or to a video where you think you need to refresh your knowledge. In this video, it's important that you have understood what structured data is and what rich snippets are. You need to know how and where you can find the right schema classes as well as their properties to create the article snippet. Let's jump right in. I want to start with the article snippet because in my mind, it's the one snippet that really everyone must use. The reason for this is that every one of us creates content in various forms like text, podcasts or videos. And an article describes this piece of content even more. We will see this later in full detail. On this URL you can find Google's reference to the article snippet. You know from the previous videos that Google defines its schema types that are often called schema classes as well on top of schema.org. That's why we have a look onto this page first. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would encourage you to go back to module 1 of my structured data training. The videos there explain in every detail where you can find the right schema classes and how you decide which one fits best. It also clarifies the difference between schema types, schema properties, schema.org, rich snippets, etc. Anyway, on this reference page you can also see how rich snippets may look like in search results. At the time of the creation of this video, Google's reference said that pages with the article schema may show up in a so-called carousel. As always, Google does not guarantee that a rich snippet may show up in search results like this. They also change things very often, so it may be that the examples shown here will be outdated very soon. That's why it's important to always keep an eye on the reference page. Because Google does not always show a rich snippet for a particular schema doesn't mean you shouldn't integrate structured data at all. The opposite is the case because search engines are everywhere nowadays. Obviously we are using the websites of search engines to search using keywords and see with our eyes all the nice rich snippets they produce on this result page. But as you may know, voice search gets more and more important these days as well. So there is nothing you can see with your eyes. Structured data gets analyzed and prepared by smart assistants and outputted as language. Google is a pioneer here because they turn an article schema into content-based actions for their Google Assistant. This is especially interesting for podcasts, recipe and news publishers because the Google Assistant can play and read out podcasts, episodes, recipes and news if a voice search hits your site. So please do not underestimate voice search. It's not a thing that may be appear in the future. It's already there. And as artificial intelligence gets better and better, structured data gets more and more important too. Now let's have a look on schema.org. In module 1 of my structured data training, you have learned that schema classes can have parent or child schemas. As you can see here, an article schema class is a child of the creative work. It also has several child schemas like news article, tech article and so on. First, it's important to understand that all the child schemas are article schemas because they are children of it. From module 1 of the structured data training, you know that they inherit all the properties from its parents. Second, it's important to understand that you can use every child schema here. You don't need to stick with the main article schema. If you think tech article fits best, use this one. Google will recognize it as an article as well because it also knows everything about schema.org and its structure. In this video, I want to stick with the article schema because it's the most widely used one, I guess. The child schemas do not differ a lot. You can check them out by browsing the schema.org web website and the specific schema types you need. Now we want to find out which properties are recommended and which one are required. For this, I go back to Google's reference page to check them out. Note that Google 
differentiates between AMP and non-AMP pages. AMP means Accelerated Mobile Pages. It's an open source initiative to make the web faster. SNP, my rich snippets and structured data plugin for WordPress, supports the AMP plugin for WordPress built by Google and Automatic. So every snippet that gets attached to a post will appear on your AMP pages too. Nothing to worry about. By the way, you can find the link to the AMP project and the plugin that I use in the description area. So with that knowledge of all recommended and required properties, we now switch to our WordPress dashboard. Let's say we want to create an article snippet for all of our posts. Because my WordPress plugin has a feature built in that I have called Global Snippets, we can create one single article schema and attach it to every single post automatically. Of course, you can always create a single snippet on a single page, post or custom post type. If you don't use my plugin, please feel free to use the structured data generator on my website. It's totally free of charge and it outputs structured data in JSON-LD format uh, that you can use on your non-WordPress sites as well. Now let's go back to the dashboard. We click on Global Snippets to create a new one. Please note that some predefined example snippets are shipped with the plugin. It will ask you if it should install them after the activation. If you dismissed the question, you can always go to the settings page here of the plugin to install or reinstall them at any time. For now, I don't want to work with the delivered example because I want you to learn how to build a snippet from the ground up. First, I give this global snippet a name. This is just for internal purposes. In the very first input field, I search for article. The plugin suggests the other article types that are all children of the main article type as well. If you want to go with something else, like the tech article, for example, please feel free to select it here. As I said before, I want to stick with the main article type here, so I select it. The plugin intelligently loads some properties from the schema. Um, this functionality just exists to save you some time. Note that in some cases the preloaded list of properties is incomplete, so it might be that you have to add some properties that are requ required or recommended as well. I have opened Google's reference here on another tab, the reference for the article. When we scroll down, we can find the list of properties that are required and down below the ones that are recommended. As you can see here, Google wants us to use author, date published, headline, image and so on and for the recommended properties, date modified, description, main entity of type. This is exactly what we see here. From here, everything is super easy. All we need to do is to fill all the fields with the values. Because we are working with a global snippet, we can use placeholder field types to automatically fill the properties with their values, depending on the current post. I start with the easiest one, the headline. I click on edit, and as you can see, um, the plugin gives you the description that you can find on schema.org as well. And here we want uh, the snippet to dynamically fill the headline property with our um, post title. That's it pretty much here. We can close it. This is the same for date published, post published date. Um, I go on with the other properties, the description. I want to have the excerpt te text here. Date modified. Post modified date. Yeah. The other properties are a little bit more tricky, but once you understand what Google wants to see here, it's also easy to set up. Now let's switch back to Google's reference page. As you can see here, Google wants us to use a person 
or an organization schema type. Plus for the person or organization the name property is required. So let's do this. Switch back to our global snippet. Search for the author. And now we have the possibility the possibility to search for a person. Oops, person and select this one. Now the plugin also loads some properties here, the name and the URL. We can use both, only the name is required because we have um, the post author name here and we can also fill the post author URL here. So what we did is we added a child schema type person with its own properties, name and URL. Just name is required, but we added the URL as well. This is the same with the other properties that I have left over now. In particular, this is the image. Let me close this now. Uh, the image, the publisher, and the yeah image and the publisher for now. When we have a look at the reference again, we can see that for the image, Google wants us to use an image object or a plain URL. And for the publisher, they want us to use the organization schema type, which has several properties that have child schema types themselves. For example, the, the logo property of the organization must be an image object here. So let's add them as well. We start with the image because it's the easiest one here. I want the plugin to use the post thumbnail URL. Yes, that's it. For the publisher, we need to search for an organization. Where is it? Here we are. Here it's the same. The plugin loads some properties for us, so we don't have to add them ourselves. The same here, logo and name is required. URL is a nice to have property that I added myself. In this example, the organization of this website is the name of the blog. So I just choose here the blog title. But as always, please feel free to add something totally different here if you need another value apart from the blog title. You can always choose direct text input and, and choose your own um, superhero name here. I go with blog title. The URL is our main website URL. So I choose blog URL which in this case would be wpbuddy.test and the logo should be an image object. Image object. And when you can remember, we need here the image object with the height, URL and width. For me it's super easy, I just use the site icon URL and for the width the site icon width parameter and for the height the site icon height. I'm closing them. Um, maybe just a Quick note, the site icon can be set up here under Appearance, Customize. And you then can find the site icon here under the Site Identity tab. So please make sure that you have uploaded an image here. 
so that the plugin can use the values, the URL, the width and the height. So that's pretty much it. I now make sure that this global snippet gets loaded on every post. I can do that by setting up rules in the rules meter box down here. Um, it seems that for this global snippet it's uh, okay because I want the post type to be equal to posts. So I save my settings, click on publish. And I now check a single post. I will copy the link to a single post here and enter it on Google Structured Data Test Tool. You should be familiar with this tool already. I have shown it to you several times during the Structured Data Training video course. So all you need to do is to enter URL here and run the test. Please make sure that this URL must be public available. So in my case it wouldn't work because I'm on a local test domain. So I enter some code snippets here and go back to you. After the validation Google shows us uh, all types of structured data it finds on the page. Here we see our article snippet but unfortunately it produces two warnings and two errors. Let's click on them to see what's wrong. So now the tool says that the publish logo URL is wrong or is empty. This is because I've used the site icon uh, type but as you can remember I have not selected a site icon in the customizer so Let's go back to the customizer to define one. Customize site identity and here we find the site icon. I use my beloved donuts image. Yeah, let's crop it. Publish it. All right, that is done. The image field is missing in this snippet. This is this is true because the plugin will delete all empty properties from the structure. The reason for this is because our blog post has no image thumbnail yet. So let's attach one. Click edit. Feature image. I'm using this person. Update. All right, let's go back, see what's wrong. And of course, uh, we totally forgot to add something for the main entity of page property. That is required as well. Google just needs the URL of this of the post itself. So let's add the block URL by, edi by editing our global snippet. By the way, I wrote a blog post about the main entity of page property. If you want to know more about it and why it's important, please follow the link in the description area. Post URL. That's it. Now let's start our test again by clicking here on new test. And after the validation you can see no errors, no warnings. Everything is fine now. Alright, good job. Alright, let's sum everything up what we have learned in this video. At this point in time, all posts and pages that have a correct article schema appear in a carousel on search result pages. As always, there is no guarantee that your post will show up as a rich snippet. It's up to the search engines and their algorithms. However, that doesn't mean you should not use structured data, especially if you are a podcast, recipe or news publisher. You could profit from being indexed in voice search results too.
The article schema has child schemas that can be used as well. An example is the tech article schema type. You should use more specific schema types whenever possible. Read carefully through Google's reference pages to find what you should and should not do. The reference also points out which properties are just recommended and which ones are required. With that knowledge and with the information from schema.org, you are able to create your own article snippet using SNP, my rich snippets and structured data plugin for WordPress, as shown in this video. In the next video, I will show you how to create recipe snippets. So this will be a yummy video. See you there.